In this video I'm going to be making some uh, pixel stakes or piece stakes. I'm going to be making dual, dual row ones. Um, this is what we're going to be basically designing here which I already have but we'll start from scratch for this video. So I want to make a, a square um, which will be We'll just go up here, it'll be uh, 420 wide by 230 high. Uh, that's millimetres. And then um, that forms our, our outer cut. Um, so what we'll do here is I'll just copy paste that. And then I'll make another two. Because what I want to do is um, I want to have two rows so there'll be two faces and I want the back to be slightly wider um, just to flatten it out a bit so um, I'm going to give the back piece an extra 20 mil over the uh, the two front faces so that'll be 70, uh, 70, 70 and 90 so we'll just change this one to the height will be 70 And then we'll change this one, the same, the height will be 70. Now I'll change these layers, and put them both on the red layer, which is going to be a score line. I don't want to completely cut with these. So um, uh, you'll have to adjust your laser settings, obviously, to score the coro and not cut through it. But what we'll do is we'll, we've got those, so um, we want to set our, pic, uh, set our pixels up. So um, I'm using 2.5 millimeter Coro. I'll just make that green. Uh, yeah, I'm using 2.5 millimeter Coro because um, I don't need to use super thick Coro for these. I want to make a lot of these. So the thinner, the um, cheaper, I guess. Uh, this seems to work well. But we'll make these pixel hole 11, 11 millimeters, um, and. That just makes the 12 mil pixel sit a little bit tighter in the um, in the coro. So now I want to use the array tool, and uh, here we're going to do. I'm going to do 16, just because I can, and they're 25.4 mil spacing from center to center, which is there, um, and that'll give me one inch spacing. But I'm going. I'm only going to be putting a pixel every two inches but if I decide to go with one inches I've got the holes cut so now I've done 16 pixels um, I'll just group those so now I've got those I want two of those so I'll copy paste to make a second and then I'll take one of these I'll just highlight them and then uh, up the top here is basically align the centers so it'll snap them together so they're perfectly aligned same with this one and then we'll align them okay so now they're perfectly centered just how i want them so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to just drag these up and we'll put it close enough we'll just go into the corner we use the direction keys on your um, on your keyboard and hold control. This will give you a finer control over it. If you don't hold control, you'll see it jumps. If you hold control, it'll be just a lot finer. So now that's snapped in to the corner there nicely. So I know that's along the same cut lines. And then the same with this one. We'll just put this up here. Come into the corner again. And then we'll hold control. All right. So now we've got that in there. That forms the basic shape as what you see there. Um, so now what I want to do is get rid of the score lines that are going that are overridden by the cut lines. So we need to select the red layer. Make sure you've got just the red layer select. Press Alt B. This breaks it apart into individual lines 
um, in light burn, if you drag from the the left to the right, you'll see it's red. Um, that will only highlight something that's completely in it. So you see how it didn't grab that pixel there? Because it's not completely in it, it has to, well, that's that's grouped, so it's not going to grab it. You know what I mean? Um, if I go that way, it'll everything it touches. So I want to drag. Um, from the left down like that and it's just going to highlight that line and then I can press delete and the same works here hit delete now I've got rid of those and we'll do the same for this one alt B and do the same drag it like that oh, yep. and then um yeah, so now we have the two score lines. This would be for the fold, and then the green ones will be the cut lines. So the last pit we want to do now is just um, for zip ties. Um, so we make another square, go back to the green layer, and I don't know, we'll say 5 mil wide, and say 4 mil high. That looks pretty good. And then um, we'll just zoom in, give ourselves a few mil from the edge, maybe about there, and we'll copy paste that. And then um, if we want a rod to go up the back of it, I'm just going to put these here so you can cable tie in a rod if you want to. Um, I don't know how wide you want it, but you can sort of kind of decide where how wide you want your rod we'll just do that for this video and then um, the last one will go here and we'll say about that far so now we've got um, they're the cable tie holes so again we'll drag from the top left to right like that and it's only going to highlight what's fully within the square so we can go copy and then paste and then just while we've got that there we'll group that and I'll just copy it again so now I've got it grouped and then just kind of put it in wherever you want for however many cable ties you want to use on it I'm not going to be too precise here you get the idea what I'm doing so that basically just creates um, the cable ties and the piece that I want so now I'll cut this out on the laser and um, so yeah um, as, as you said it's basically that um, so with, like I said before with um, your laser you will need to adjust the layers so you've got cut and score my cut lines my green um, and you'll have to do the laser settings and then the score line um, that's just so it cuts through one side um, i'm going to load the coro in with the flute sort of grain that way so um, when i line the laser up it's going to cut between the flute and that'll allow me to fold it and the same will happen there. It'll cut between the flute. Um, and then, yeah, we'll send it to the laser and then we'll have a look at it and push some pixels in. All right. Now we're back from the laser. We have the piece cut out. And the idea is we're going to make it like that. So um, now what I want to do is I want to push the pixels in so um, to match the model I'm going to be doing in X lights I want to uh, flip it upside down so I'm looking at the back of it and I'm going to have my start point here so I'm going to put 
this will be the bottom, of course. So I'm going to put it in the second pixel up and then just go up the string like this. Then I'll come over to the top and then just continue down. Okay, and then um, that's pretty much it. Just flatten these cords in. A little bit of messing around, make it all nice. And then um, that'll be the end result, which will be, um, you know, you whack your cable ties through there to button it up. Uh, a plug to um, daisy chain into the next one. If you wanted to, you could get a rod and then a um, cable tie, a rod in there. Something like that. Just your cheap rod from a hardware store. Cut it up so I could cut it um, like this one that I've already made. So that's got the rod. It's all cable tied. A little bit rough, um, but they're good enough just to for filler. Um, it costs about 70 cents to for this piece of coro to make this and then 16 pixels whatever that's got costs going to be but yeah it works out to be about 70 cents for each one of these um, we've got a bunch of them we just keep cutting them so i'm going to cut a fair few and then um we'll just we'll get the trusty old pixel tester Then we'll plug her in. And then, yeah. Obviously, you just need to work it a bit. But I'm just rushing because it's a video. Don't need to spend lots of time on it. And then, yeah. Um, like I said, uh, once you make a lot of them, obviously... Some of these are just prototypes, but you you get the idea. And then that way, um, you it's like a dual row. So you kind of get two effects, or if you're walking down the street, you can see it from that angle as well as that angle, instead of just a flat. Um, but yeah, next we'll go to X lights and we'll make the model in X lights to correspond to um, what I've done here. Okay, now we're in X lights. Um, I want to make the the pixel stake uh, model, so we'll go up here to a polyline and then we just create a polyline. We'll just go like that and then like that. Down and then um, hit escape to get out of it. Okay, so now we will just okay. So I've only I'm only using 16 nodes all up. So I'm just going to do 16, and then now it's just a matter of um, just getting it all right. So. I'm going to have that pixel between the two. And it'll be there somewhere like that. Click off it. No, we can come up higher. No, I think it's that's it there. Like that. And then like that. So there we go. We've got our rows of um, the, the 16 pixels all up at each side. If you were to... um fill every pixel and go one inch spacing then you would obviously go 32 pixels but for now i'm just experimenting with 16. Um, so we've made that so then we can go to sequencer uh, we'll just go a new sequence just animation and then we've got a polyline there and then um 
Just grab an effect and drop it on. And then as you can see there, um, there's your, uh, your pixel stake. Uh, we'll just, we'll just change the sequence to on so you can see it. Yep. So obviously, uh, you can do different effects that you know. Oh. Whereas it media is there. And yeah, you get the idea anyway. I'm sure you're well versed in X lights. Um, but yeah, that's how you create the model for it. Just use a polyline. And then yeah, um, hope that helps.